At the end of the day, for me, it's just great. It's, it's just a, a, something I'm very thankful for. Music is something I do for the love. I don't do it because I have to, or I don't do it because there's some career-driven aspiration behind it. I do it simply and totally because I absolutely love it. You can pick the stone, I'ma pick the watch. Isolation play, ain't no pick and pop. You ask me for the time, look, I ain't got it to give. I keep on making this music till I can flex on my wrist, and I can flex on these fans till I be sexy to fans. And you gon' copy my stance, I'm skating, copping some bands, and I be popping some Zans on the low, but I way up. See them homies in the cold, but I'm chillin', tell them stay up. Yo, my mama back at home, she be telling me to pray. But I done got two grown, man, this black snake moan with these fair Moans all up in my serotonin. Yeah, I just do it for the ceremony. The moment I condone it, man, I own it. This is Romans, this is me without a master. It's rolling every day, we getting richer. Then we calling this adventure. Find me tweeting scriptures, looking like I'm famous with you. On June 2nd, 1984, in Columbus, Ohio, Taylor Gray was born. He is the eldest of three kids. Taylor was raised in a musical family. Growing up, his father was their church's choir director. Mom was a soloist and traveled the world with a gospel group. His cousin is rapper Cambino, and younger brother is Kristen Gray, former Collision Records artist and now newly signed to Kirk Franklin's Foyo Soul recordings. The Grays grew up in a Pentecostal church, and with their father as a choir director, they were oftentimes amused by the entertainment. He was the animated choir director doing all his gymnastics and stuff, and you know, while he was directing a choir, and just a really excited young guy. We would look back and watch those videotapes and laugh. Some things we would make fun of because, you know, obviously we were kids, and you know, you see a grown man dancing, and you know, dancing with no shame, or just doing something physically that's just like. Grown-ups don't do this. It was funny. Like, so, you know, we would laugh in church. And when I saw my dad do stuff like that, it was just like, okay, he's really excited because the music sounded really good. He, he really likes doing this, so he's enjoying himself right now. But trying to connect it to maybe the spirit moving or God doing something in that moment, um, it, it didn't all line up yet for me. It was just our reality. For me, I started thinking a little bit more deeply about just uh, church and spiritual life, probably around age 11 or 12. We would always go to what's called children's church. Everything around us was reinforcing the Bible and, and uh, Christianity. So we all we all came up watching Christian videos, cartoons. Uh, we had like little cassette tapes with Christian stories and stuff like that. But it wasn't something that I thought deeply about. We went to Christian school for, you know, pretty much kindergarten through eighth grade. So a lot of that stuff was reinforced. But around 11 or 12, I started to kind of ask questions to really think about how this applied to me personally. When I was about 12 years old, we went through this a reenactment of a scenario where somebody died in a car accident. And it was kind of an interactive thing where you as the audience is walking through someone dying in a car accident. Then they stand before the judgment seat. And then God says that I never knew you. And they get sent to hell. So I'm like 12 years old processing all of this stuff. Like, okay, so maybe I need to pay more attention to Bible class. You know, is this stuff real? And there was a moment at the end of everything where, you know, somebody evangelized, oh, by the way, you're being led through all of the scenes by a demon, a guy dressed up as a demon. <laughs> Quite the experience. So on the way home, it just gave me a lot to think about in terms of just how serious this stuff is. Being evangelized by a fictional demon planted a seed. Taylor began to think about faith and what it meant to be a Christian. But he was just thinking. It took a while before he actually gave his life to Christ. Going to a Christian school, I always got in trouble because I was kind of a class clown or whatever, but I kind of saw myself as like a good kid who was, you know, going to have an idea what my parents told me to do, all that stuff. Um, enter high school, start going to a public school, and that's when I start wilding out. That's 
when the rebellion actually started kicking in, when I started to see the world outside of the Christian box and how I didn't fit in and how I wanted to fit in. And there was kind of a departure from the Christian values that my family instilled in me where I was two people. I was the person who I was supposed to be at home and then I was just rambunctious at school. So during the high school period was like my rebellion stage and it progressively got worse up to my senior year where I, you know, I was, I was sexually active and, you know, I was just this foul mouth little adolescent kid who didn't know what he was talking about, but just wanted to fit in with guys who were popular. So I listened to a lot of crazy hip hop, like the violent hip hop at the time. And, um, that was high school, got to college, started living on my own in a dorm. And that's kind of where I hit rock bottom in terms of that lifestyle. Um, I was on the verge of getting kicked out of college because I wasn't going to class. I was just going to parties all the time and just doing little to nothing else. And I got a letter from the university that I was getting ready to get kicked out and went and saw this, this counselor person who worked in the minority affairs office. And man, she was just like the element of grace that kind of gave me a wake up moment to the reality and the gravity of the decisions I was making. And that summer, I decided to go to this Christian camp as a counselor, not because I wanted to do anything good, but because it was this girl that I liked. It was a Christian, and I knew Christian language. So I figured I'd just follow her, and then she'd be my girlfriend once we got to the camp. But once I got to the camp, there was like this moment where we all gathered around this bonfire, and we were singing worship songs. And man, like I just feel like God really hit me at that moment with just the full revelation of who he is and the life that I was living and what Jesus had done for me and my need for him. In my mind, I just said, you know, this this is it. I'm giving everything to God. You know, I'm going to trust Christ and live my life for him going forward. But I got my happy ending. His grace drew me to repentance. Now I'm rooted in redemption and his peace. Now the land's glory is my thing. Spit that pen already riding for the glory of the king. Yeah, my former life don't even parallel. I was dead and I didn't handle peril well. Yeah, now I got this power in my body, man. It's not superpowers, man. It's power over folly and it's grace. Ace, who got them Bugattis in? Migos got Versace, Lady Gaga, Paparazzi, but it's fake. When you see that sky split, fire in his eyes lit, laughing at your trinkets, he gon' snatch off them disguises, dead in him gon' rise it, you say in your highness, bow low to the floor he rise Like what you're hearing so far? Check us out at TestimonyStories.com. That's TestimonyStories, with an F, dot com. Where you can hear content for you and about you. Everyone has a testimony. Yeah. Everyone, Everyone has, has a testimony. testimony. And we no, want to hear yours. Tell us how God has transformed your life. Each month, we will select a person to highlight and interview. Find out more at TestimonyStories.com. Testimony. Story. Testimony. Where Christian hip-hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip-hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. And now back to Taylor Gray's Testimony, A Musician Story. After years of laughing at his father's acrobatics while leading the church choir and never quite understanding what it meant to be led by the Spirit in the moment, Taylor got it. While singing worship songs around that campfire, Taylor expressed himself the only way he knew how, the Pentecostal way. Taylor joyfully was having a spiritual moment that the minister interpreted as an intention-seeking distraction. Although that made Taylor feel dismayed, thankfully, 
it didn't impact his decision to trust Christ. That moment at the campfire was was nothing that Taylor should be embarrassed about. But admitting that his first introduction to hip hop was through Puff Daddy is something he should definitely be embarrassed about. Yeah, hip hop music never heard of it. All that changed in my sixth grade life. Back when Puff Daddy was the first, first rapper that I like. Now, now I'm rocking Nike Cortez, think I'm cool. But them high school years, it's so cruel. Like, I really like Puff Daddy for some reason. It was Puffy. Puffy was like, it was the No Way Out album. You know, he had the, the song, which I thought it was his song, The More Money, More Problems, which was actually Biggie's song. And I was like, yo, I really like this. You know, and so around that junior high age, I had become fascinated with hip hop, and Puffy was the gateway. Of course, I ended up getting the big. My cousin Cam, Cam, you know, he's the one who pulled me to the side and said, "Look, man, this Puff Daddy stuff has to stop." And let me show you. Let me show you some real stuff. And <laughs> he put me on the Biggie and, and Jay Z, and you know, Busta Rhymes, and a whole bunch of other cats that I was oblivious to. So I started sneaking that stuff into the house. I started sneaking that music into the house, you know, listening to it in secret, having the radio on in my room, like real low, listening to to the secular hip hop station. And then shortly after that, I started to try and write my own stuff. That sprung into Chris finding out that I was doing that and Chris stealing my raps. And I found him on the phone one night, like rapping one of my verses to his friend on the lo- on on the phone as if he wrote it. From then on, we just we established that we both liked this and we we both worked on it. Young Taylor and an even younger Kristen, along with a friend of theirs, formed the rap trio The Elevationist. Along the way, Chris discovered his other talents like singing and producing. He started making beats for the group. And so they no longer focused on just writing bars, but composing songs. The Elevationists were pretty successful and opened up for some popular rock bands. This led to competing in a talent contest in Nashville, Tennessee. We went down there and did probably our most controversial song. At that time, it was just like ministry or death for us. It was like, we don't care. We're going to say all the taboo things. We're going to go there and be convicting with our message. And we did like this very political song talking about racism and a bunch of other stuff wrong with America at a time where none of that was, nobody was trying to hear that in music and Christian music, especially most of the bands there were like CCM bands, you know, trying to, you know, finagle their way into that market. And here we are, this aggressive hip hop band trying to be conscious. That just wasn't going to work. Same time, while we were down in Nashville, we also were invited to come to the studio and work with a a gentleman who I guess had overseen and executive produced some of some, uh, I guess, Christian rock bands that were were pretty notable at the time. Um, He had worked with people like Mute Mass and uh, Stacey Dorico and had like their, their records kind of all along the walls in the studio. Sat down, talked to us about an opportunity to work with him and you know, the thing that I remember the most about that meeting is that he told us that we had to play the game in order to, to be successful in music. And that, for me, that turned me off because that pretty much meant that we were going to have to change our whole sound. We were going to pretty much have to sound like Toby Mac. And that's just not who we were. So we talked about it on the way back home. And, you know, <laughs> at that point, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go work my job full-time and seek the Lord about getting his preaching and I'm going I'm to chill in this music stuff and the group kind of fizzled out from there. A lion king in an elephant graveyard, a neighborhood away from being the next Trayvon, a black man who lost his race to the swift, I almost lost my cool, I'm out of patience for this. See, this is where writing gets complicated When your mind can't take it in, them gossips waiting That's ill and that's real, and yeah, I'm all up in my feelings I don't look the part for an ad on Rapzilla And I know I'm not the illest and not worthy of top five But this can get deep, man, I'm just keeping it topside I'm looking at cats, some of them got you fooled This is insecure and two faces, any one that you knew 
Some label heads got their own interests in mind. In the shadows with their jealousy, weak gimmicks and pride. They hide behind theology, they don't even believe. They're scrambling for some market plans, only made to deceive like it's Christ. But show his egos in that green room. For the awkwardness, suffocating the steam room. Blowing you off like you ain't even in their gene pool. But keep your mouth shut, don't question these actors. His ego say you bitter and send you straight to the blacklist. At that time, he was engaged. And because he was disgusted with the music industry, he decided to focus on a 9-to-5 job and take care of his future family. His father also started his own church, and Taylor served there, and now is an elder. Although he walked away from music, every now and then he would get inspired to put out a project. But his biggest critic is his cousin Cambino. Wanting to impress Cam, his drive got stronger along with his skill set, and he began believing in himself as a rapper. While Taylor was figuring out what he wanted to do musically, his brother Kristen grew to become a successful solo artist. Even though Chris was still in Taylor's rhymes as a kid, now people associate Taylor as Kristen Gray's brother. It's, a, it's another motivation for me. Um, it's, to, it's to kind of differentiate myself to a certain extent or, or to not necessarily separate myself because I view music through the lens of doing music with Chris a lot of times uh, because we've come up in this thing together. So it's not a diss to me necessarily to, for somebody to say, oh, that's, that's Chris's brother. Chris, I'll say this far and away, like has always been my favorite rapper. Once he started coming to his own, I was just like, man, this stuff is crazy. This stuff that he hasn't even released probably will never get released. That blew my mind as, and will still blow my mind to this day. So that kind of scale, where it's just like Chris's brother, I understand it because Chris took his solo career to where it is today, and I respect it, and I support him wholeheartedly with that. If that becomes he's not very good as an artist, or he's not a very good rapper, then that's where I start to say, okay, you need to make your case beyond the fact that I'm Chris's brother and just look at the bars, look at the work, look at the content. Like, is there something spiritual that you're gaining from it, just from the perspective I'm coming from? Um, is there is there talent there just on the scale of everything else that you're hearing in CHH or just hip-hop in general? I don't just base it on that scale that just because I'm Chris's brother, I'm not worth a listen, at least give it a, a fair judgment. And I think the more that people start to do that, then they are giving the respect. Um, they, they're giving it the, the credibility that it should get. But at the end of the day, all of this is just, for me, it's just grace. It's, it's just a, a, something I'm very thankful for. Music is something I do for the love. I don't do it because I have to, or I don't do it because there's some career-driven aspiration behind it. I do it simply and totally because I absolutely love it. And that's, that's freedom for me. And a lot of times that means freedom from opinion. Testimony. Testimony. Where Christian hip-hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip-hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones, or turn the stereo volume up and listen. Connect with Testimony and Musician Story through social media. Find links to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at TestimonyStories.com. In that, all up, in that, go. My name is Taylor Gray, and you're listening to Testimony, a musician's story. Taylor has become quite the lyricist and makes music that he calls rapidy rap. Others call it underground. 
His music isn't for everyone, mainly because it makes you think, which is pretty ironic being that he used to adore the artist formerly known as Puff Daddy. That stuff bores me. Boring. I, I'd rather have depth to my music and say, and people say, like, I don't feel like thinking that much than for me to just make something that everybody just bouncing off the wall to and not thinking at all. I'm glad I'm not in a shiny suit dancing. I'll say it like this. I don't have an unrealistic expectation. Like, I, uh, I know what I'm good at and I'm comfortable swimming in that pond. I don't mind being challenged to do other things and, and to try to grow to, I guess, achieve another ability or another level of potential. But at the same time, I know what's home and I know what I'm created to do. And when it comes to music, there's sometimes this undertone where of, uh, you know, you're leaving somebody out. Well, you know, yes, I am. And there will be someone for them. Being underground is not something that scares me. I, I, I breathe underground just fine. It's, it's the chip on my shoulder. It's, it's where I came from. It's the musical style that I most enjoy listening to. And honestly, it's the types of friends that I hang around it are people who have been, you know, kind of taken for granted and, you know, maybe misunderstood in some ways. So it kind of fuels my entire creative approach to music is to know that there are going to be some people that aren't going to feel it. But for those people who do feel it, I want to make sure I give them the best that I can give. All up in that, all up in that. I think I got it. I throw you up like it's Johnny Unitas and Johnny Mnemonic. I think I got it. Have a good day, then I run to my vomit. That's me being honest. It's honest. You see me fall short, that's just me being honest. You think you're so bad, you should see my accomplice. No limit, no limits to what we accomplish. Yo, all of you watching, yo, this year been crazy. This year been bold. Powers that be, man, I know that you hate me. Holla with B to the only one you for this life that he gave me. This life that he gave everybody so jealous. Don't lie when you tell us it's under the bridge. Right in my face, you got two faces. Which side is gonna face me? I just can't find it. I find out you faking. So I see myself in designer McQueen. Vogue, I see myself in the finest of things Vogue, they don't make it for the background They don't make it for the background They don't make it like this, men they make it like the world wanna see it And you know it, they don't make it for the background All up in that Vogue, they don't make it for the background All up in that, all up in that Testimony Testimony, where Christian hip-hop artists give you an exclusive look into their lives and their music. Take a journey into the minds of today's top Christian hip-hop artists as they open up and share about their past, their faith, and their music in ways you've never heard before. Put on your favorite pair of headphones or turn the stereo volume up and listen. Everyone has a testimony. And we want to hear yours. Tell us how God has transformed your life. Each month, we will select a person to highlight and interview. Find out more at TestimonyStories.com. Testimony. Download the podcast of Testimony and Musician Story on iTunes. Find out how at TestimonyStories.com. A musician story. You are listening to Taylor Gray's Testimony, A Musician's Story. I swear I saw you looking back. I swear I saw you looking back. I swear I saw you looking back. But I'm better for Someone tell me that I'm better for Recently, Taylor independently released his first official solo album, The Mocker and the Monarch. The album includes production from heavy hitters like Wick, Wes Pendleton, and Daniel Steele. Yeah. 
melodramatic, muffled minimized melodies, melanin masks, moments murdering memories, fighting for freedom, but freedom is in the fleeting, fighting for FEMA, the fiends know what you feed them, media take out, take out cameras for world star, take out community, systematic as cold war, I see the mirror, I hate what I see, it's ugly, it's blatant, it's like you drug me, my place in society lost, place inside the law, the stake is inside my heart, cold case, old crates, no traces, I'm dying off, I don't see me at work, I don't see me at worth, I don't relate to your social norms, don't see me at church, used to wish I had blue eyes, just like Christopher Reeve, just watched him as Superman, but I didn't see me, imagination figments, you just selling pigments, yeah. and that's the echo of eugenics, it's cold, but you don't see the light, you don't see the light today, man, look to put you in the hole, but you don't see the light, you just see the walls looking back and it's feeling so cold, but you don't see the light, you don't see the light today, man, look to put you in the hole. Then you see the light, then you see the sunlight Hits you where they hits you where you suck The genies in the bottles where the church is stuck Expect fetuses to have to fight for personhood But someone in the market for the baby parts I think this dude in the bathroom got lady parts Or Caitlyn parts, I think he got an SB And somehow my wife just got way more sexy So where's the sermon about the ghost building pharmacists? Where's morals when injustice isn't partisan? Yeah, your next partner may be AIDS positive Your next vote is overshadowed by politics Politics. It's too much, please take a load off It's too much stress, man, please take the Zoloft And now my little sister on my conscience The culture got dudes drugging girls up at college That's when you gonna see me up in the news With the smug face, mug shot What you trying to do, man, it's cold But you don't see the light You don't see the light of day, man Look, they put you in the hole But you don't see the light You just see the walls looking back And it's feeling so cold This idea that there are two images that you see in the mirror. One image is your best impression of what you think you should be or what you think you should look like. So essentially that's the way that you live based on an impression that you're trying to mimic or mock. The other image is actually who you are. It's, and it's not defined by you. It's defined by what the mirror says. And the mirror ultimately is a metaphor for the Word of God. And essentially God's design. So that's where the monarch element comes in because he becomes king of the definition. There are, there are mockers and there are monarchs. And when you realize who you are, you, you embellish that. And when you're trying to imitate something that you're not, then you, you fall into that trap as well. Maybe it's just magic. Maybe it's just wisdom. And you can see the moral, but you see contradiction. And you just buy the cameras. Never see the candidates, you just see the bandits. The building is abandoned, and you just see a man. So you won't fall, but I say it's falling, and we feel so small. And we can see this world build a case against him. Worst, he's a liar, at best, he's a mystery. But did you see a martyr? Did you witness murder? Didn't we all start it? Didn't we deserve it? Tell me what's living when your death can't hurt you When love springs shame and pain becomes virtue Yeah, this is long range chivalry Open, open doors to forever I'm hoping for forever Long live the hollow man, hollow man Lion heart, blinding heart Promise I'm gonna see you at the end I see you when we mount on wings with eagles And get carried by the wind Told us you gonna carry us again when it's just more than rose from concrete It's gold in the concrete it's soul from the eyes leaves The soul and the body come alive for the very first time The water turns to wine The water turns fine Say, Said I'm just telling stories This is just an urban legend This is my philosophy But I got all the questions Popping circumstance, fall in love with clergy The scroll spoke to me, said it's only one worthy It's well, well eyes, knees tremble on the pavement Not much that I can say, but I can say that I'm persuaded So what's another artist just trying to sell you songs If I ain't shed no tears from that 23rd song Yo, this'll make the song cry, yeah Remember Titans from the strong side Yo, I was fighting for the wrong side This is the reward Yo, I don't need the world's ears I just need yours Just fighting for the wrong side This is the reward 
I don't need the world's ears, just need yours. Thank you for listening to Testimony, a musician story. To hear this episode again, as well as past episodes, visit TestimonyStories.com. Until next time, I'm Brown Theory, the music lover constantly seeking positive music.